were a band who were only there for a couple of years in the late 70s, early 80s. They have a tremendous reputation, the pop group. Mark Stewart has always been active through the years, but now he's decided to bring his band back. The pop group are here at Le Guess Who Festival. Welcome back, Mark Stewart. Rock on. You have to, to use the mic, sir. <laughs> Hello, Mike. So, um, you've always been active as an artist in all sorts of ways, but what was the moment you thought, well, the pop group has got to return? I was living in Berlin, and I got this phone call that the creator of The, the, creator of the Simpsons, Matt Groening, yeah. was curating a festival in England, a music festival, and he was asked to choose his favorite bands, old and new, for this festival, and he asked Iggy to reform the Stooges and me to reform the pop group, right? <laughs> I virtually, and Iggy said yes. I, yeah, Iggy said yes at the time. I didn't do it till a year later. I virtually passed out. I thought, How the, what the hell have I got to do with Bart Simpson, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and, but in the end, you did it. In the end, we did it, and he put the idea into the head, into, into our heads, but we were kind of talking at the, about it beforehand. The idea was in the air. But the strangest thing is some these things that we wrote in my mum's bedroom, we were like 14 or 15, songs from the first album, Why or Summit. Yeah. Time and time again, generation after generation, musicians from Nick Cave, Nine Inch Nails, Massive Attack, blah, blah, blah. They keep on saying time and time again, this record, that record blew our heads when we were, young, when, when, when we were starting. It blew, somehow, we blew open a, a box yeah. of musical ideas that hadn't been there before and everybody's picking things out and all these little animals came out and ran all over the place and it's just like and we're doing a compilation of stuff from the original first period and the only way i can describe that thing when we were young is the boys whose heads exploded it's just like Whoa! your head just comes out with all these crazy ideas yeah. and people pick up pick them up and run off with them but us in turn are insp inspired by things so it's a kind of feeding process you know but did it explode for your band right away, or did all yes. those people recognize... within the second or yeah. third concert, we were playing... We played my brother's birthday party in a shed. <laughs> and then we played two school dances, right? And then suddenly, within, within five or six months, we were on the front cover of every single English music magazine. And then, when I was still at school, I was on tour with Patti Smith, and I had to come back on the ferry yeah. with no sleep and try and do my exam, because I was running away from school to play with the band. It's crazy, crazy. So how does it translate to this time? I mean, 30 years have passed. Well, yeah. <laughs> Where? Nothing has changed? <laughs> I'm not com for me, I don't compare, I don't think of the past, and I, I don't even think of yesterday too much. I'm always thinking of what you can do in the future, and I think the hope for the world is in the future, and you shouldn't be shackled by historical politics or bad ideas that went wrong. I think, I think civilization dwells too much on the past and, and, and hope is a power for the future, right? So I can't really compare us now to us in the past. For me, it's a bit like a brand new project because we're, complete, we're kind of different people and we're not trying to recreate something that we did before. And it is a very different, for me, it's a very, very different feeling. For me, as soon as we got in this rehearsal room, something appeared, like an entity, like a golem appeared, this kind of yeah. thing appeared, which is separate to me, separate to Gareth, it's separate to Dan, and it's, it's its own thing, and we can't control it. We just have to stand back and, and, and let it happen. So there's, there's an, another energy now. When, before, when we were younger, it was all to do with being very, not that we're not idealistic now, but tr all these ideas exploding in your head and finding out about this, that, po poetry, politics, weird music. It was like you're tearing your hair out, and very, you know, that whole... But it's different. I think it's better now, personally. Yeah. We had something to say as well. You yes. You didn't only reform to perform old songs. You released a new record exactly. this year. It's called Citizen Zombie. Yes. Uh, it's a very interesting title, considering everything we've been talking about the past week uh, in the wake of the uh, Paris attacks. Of course. <coughs> We're all considering modern civilization as it is. Um, is that something you're right in the middle of now? Yes. Everything that happened this week? Yes. How do you look at that? I personally really hate it when stupid musicians try and make comments on things in a very short amount of time just to be hip. Yeah, do they? <laughs> um, in England, there's a, uh, I think my, I think my uh, role in the world or with my life is just to flag up different ideas which aren't necessarily mine, which I think are valid concepts away from the mainstream, right? Yeah. And there are, there, there, is something else behind the mirror 
that we're not being told about. Not necessarily concerning this week or whatever. Yeah. And there's, there's a parallel universe and there's lots of vested interests behind the scenes. And it's not really, we're one, we're, you know, it's, it's a very long four hour documentary. You would, you would like to make about that, if you could, would tell everything, you mean, yeah. It's not to, it's, I don't think, I don't think I know, you don't really, no, it's not, it's, it's not, it's not, it's not, everything is interconnected. We live in a world where everything is interconnected. Like, this is made in China. The leather from my shoes comes from somewhere. We're interconnected. This whole idea of East and West is wrong. Yeah. We're all the same, we're, we're all human beings. This, we're not better, this, it's, this imperialistic looking down, um, the Americans feed their dogs more food than there is in Africa. 10,000 men, women and children die of starvation every day. Can you tell some more about the concept behind Citizen Zombie? Right. So, there's a, a neuroscientist called, I think it's Oliver Sacks, right? Who wrote this book called uh, Manufacturing Madness, right? And they say that the human beings at the moment are only using 1% of their brain, right? And I think that there's a plan for the zombification of society, right? To try and make children into zombie drone slaves, <laughs> mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Zombie drone slaves, so whose plan is that? I mean, is it an actual plan or how do you see that? Just, we, we're not, we're, you can't just spend your whole, from the cradle to the grave, you just can't go through life just turning on the television and eating the cardboard food and what, there's much more, it's, there's a multicolor world and they want people to be zombies and not question authority and not think for themselves. They just want you to be worried about, the trivial is very dangerous company, they just want you to be worried about stupid things. Buy their fucking, things from their war factories, you know, it's... So what happens It doesn't when you, have to be like this. So what happens when you perform and you see all these people staring at their, their mobile phones? Well, thank and God they don't too much at our, no? our concerts, no. Most people kind of go... <laughs> like but this guy up here. It happens at the strangest moments, right? I know. People do it. I know. It's, I do it. I know. My girlfriend does it in the middle of... Of your show. Oh, yeah? What happens? <laughs> So what happens when you see that? Does it hurt you? Um, we well, don't know what they're doing with their phones. They could be Maybe looking they're doing at some something special, something important. Magical, you know, they could be on in the power regions of the electronic frontiers. It could be something somewhere cool. What do you think about Technology the role? Technology can either be enslaving or enabling. Yes, it can. But at the same time, I mean, when people are at, at concerts, it's probably not the way uh, they are supposed to be interacting with the music. To a certain extent, but as an avid kind of record collector, I really used to love bootlegs. I used to search like rare David Bowie bootlegs and Velvet Underground bootlegs and stuff. We used to, we used to find shops and come to Europe. I mean, there's a, there's a record fair here at the moment I want to go to, which is, <coughs> so people recording shows clandestinely was always something people did. Yeah. It's just when they film it with their films, I wish they'd do something creative when they put it up to, up, you know, make a scratch video out of it or treat it, solarize it or something. It's a bit. Yeah, so, so the pop group now has already existed quite as much as long as it did in longer, back in the day. Longer, longer, right? You haven't released as much albums now, but are you going to be working on that? for? Yes, we're going to be, this is going to continue for quite a long time. There's like a Stalin's five year plan. So next year, there's at the beginning in February, there's a reissue of the, of the second album, which is called For How Much Longer Do We Tolerate Mass Murder? Then there's an album of early live material coming out. And later in the year, there'll be a new album, which we're just, which there's so much material coming out. This, there's just so much energy coming out from the minute we, we started playing together. We've got like 15 new songs going. And I think there's an exclusive for you guys here on the, I think the album title will be called Obey. Obey? Yes. And when will it be released? The end of next year. But there's a the reissue in February. Year. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you regret? not reforming much earlier? No. No? I'm not a person for It regrets. just wasn't the time. I was quite happy doing what I was doing on my own stuff, my solo stuff. I'm going to do that as well, you know. It's, yeah. There's all sorts of, there's so many cool things to, you know. For me, what's amazing is meeting fellow musicians and getting to, once we were here in the, in the Hague and, uh, and we met Sun Ra, Ornette Coleman, 
three years ago, I worked with Kenneth Anger, Richard Hell. So you just get to work with, like, I, I'm still that 14 year old boy in my bedroom, like looking through books and records and collecting stuff, and suddenly you're sat next to, like, Sun Ra or Bowie or something. It's like, what the fuck? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's just mad. Mm. I love it as much as I'd be doing it even if nobody was interested. I can't stop. We're going to see how alive the Bob Group is tonight here at Legacy Dead Festival. or alive. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mark. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Cheers.